Hi, I'm James Ward, a platform evangelist at Salesforce. I want to walk you through a little demonstration of a little sample application that will do uh, basically real-time ETL from Salesforce to, in this case, a MySQL database, and it will do that through an app running on Heroku. So I want to walk you through the steps in order to get this all working and then show you how, to, how it works. So I have this little app that's going to run on Heroku. It's a Node.js application, and it's what is going to actually do the transformation and loading into MySQL. So the first thing that we need to do is deploy this application on Heroku. So I'm just going to click that deploy button there, and this will make it super easy to get this app up and running. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is just say, yep, that all looks good. It's a personal app. I'll let it pick a name, and then you'll see I'm using MySQL. Of course, I could do this ETL process to any database, but uh, picked MySQL just as an example. So I'm going to deploy this application, and so Heroku will now go through all the steps to get the code for that application from my GitHub repo, then build the application, and then deploy it up on Heroku. So this should happen pretty quick. There's not a whole lot in this app. Looks like it's pretty much done so looks like we're good okay so let's go manage the app and then we can see some some information that we need it automatically assigned a domain name for my application and that's based on this uh, auto assigned application name so we can look down and see the different information but here's that uh, domain for the app so we've got this app, it's going to do the ETL. Let's now go into Salesforce and we're going to use workflow to set up uh, the, the way for this to actually get the data out of Salesforce and then uh, move it into that MySQL database. So I'm going to search and set up for, um, for my workflow. So let's add one more character there. Okay, workflow rules. So I'm going to create a new rule here. And the object that I'm going to be doing the CTL on is going to be the contact object. So we'll select that one. And rule name will say ETL to MySQL. And then I can pick the valuation criteria. In this case, I'm, I'm, I want to do the ETL process whenever a record is created and whenever it's edited. So I'll select that second one there. And then I need to specify some rule criteria. Uh, I really don't want any criteria. So what I'm going to do is just put in a formula here that just says true. So we're going to uh, make sure that that all is good. Check that syntax. Should be fine. But yep, so now the rule criteria is just uh, every <laughs> everything will pass through. Okay, so save and next. And now I need to add a workflow action. What I'm going to do is create a new outbound message and we'll give this a name, but this is what's actually going to send the data over to the app on Heroku. So we'll say this uh, ETL to Heroku, and that unique name is fine. Okay, then for my endpoint URL, that's going to be the domain name for my app here, and we'll put HTTPS in front of that. There we go. Might put a slash on the end. We can select the user to send it as. And then uh, one possible option for making this more secure would be to send the session ID and then validate uh, the session and the data so that we'd have some kind of validation that this data is actually coming from a trusted source. You could also use Heroku private spaces and constrain the access to this application to uh, just a specific set of um, Salesforce uh, uh, apps. Um, but we'll just leave this uh, kind of wide open, not the best uh, from a security standpoint, but good for a demo. Okay, now I need to select the fields. I'm going to add a uh, first name, and let's add last name, and let's add uh, email address somewhere in here. Okay, let's add those fields. So that all looks good. So now let's do save. And now uh, our, we have our rule set up, we have our outbound message set up, so let's hit done, that all looks good. And then the last step here is to activate this workflow rule. Okay, so now whenever a contact record is created or updated, it's going to send that information to the app on Heroku. Okay, now let's go check out the logs for our application on the Heroku dashboard so we can see what's going on. So it looks like our app is up and running. That's great. So the next thing to do is to test this out and see if it's actually working. So I'm going to go into my contacts in Salesforce and just go create a new contact. 
and then want to validate that that contact actually is making it through the ETL pipeline into my MySQL database. So let's put in the three fields that we're going to be using and hit save. Okay, so that now should have made a request out to the app on Heroku because of that workflow outbound message. And we can go see that there was a post to slash and the status was 200. So it looks like that may have worked. Uh, to test this out, to see if that data is actually over in the MySQL database, what I'm going to do is open up a connection to that MySQL database and check to make sure it's actually in there. So I'm just going to use the command line MySQL client for this and connect to that MySQL database that was provisioned for this app. So just copy and paste the username and the host in here. Let's hit that. It would be easier to get that host name. So copy that host name and then have it ask me for the password. Let's go copy and paste the password here. Okay, so here's my database name. Let's copy that and then connect up to that database. And then we can do a select star from that contact table and see that sure enough, here is that record. And one thing that you'll see is that we did do a little bit of transformation on the data. We merged the first name and last name field into just a name field, but now you'll see that that data is all there. Now uh, let's test, that's the create functionality. Let's go test the update functionality. So let's go uh, edit this record and change the email address to something else and then hit save. And again, that's going to use that workflow and outbound message and send that data out to the Heroku app. We can check the logs again and see that it should have made another post. Looks like it did. And then we can go back and requery this table and see that sure enough, that record has been updated. Okay, so that's our simple ETL pipeline using workflow and a app on Heroku. You can uh, see all the source code for this application in the GitHub repository here, github.com slash jamesward slash salesforce dash etl dash mysql. Let me give you a quick little overview of the code. Pretty simple here. Uh, I have a node uh, express application. There's a function here called transform, which is going to take an S object and transform it into an object that will be used to insert it into the MySQL database. So you'll see here's where I'm doing that transformation of data. And then uh, what I, the, there's some setup in here to create the table if it doesn't exist in MySQL in a real production system, you probably wouldn't be doing that. Um, but for the demo that works. And then the outbound message uses SOAP as the payload. And so there's some SOAP information in here for acting or knacking the response uh, to that outbound message. And then finally for the Express app, I'm handling a post to slash. I'm parsing the S object information out of the SOAP payload doing the transform on the data and then doing an insert uh, or an update if, if uh, the uh, record with that ID already exists and then acting or knacking the response. So that's really all there is to it. Pretty simple application and pretty easy to deploy if you just go up to that GitHub repo and uh, hit that deploy to Heroku. And then you should be all up and running for the simple contact ETL from Salesforce to MySQL database. Thanks for watching.